are going to read in the book of John 8 from the first verse to verse 12. Amen. We have heard about that story many times. We have heard about many uh, teaching and preaching about that woman. And today I just want to attract one of the parts in, in that scripture. Amen. Amen. We see that in that story, the Pharisees wanted to, to accuse Jesus of something. So they were plotting against Jesus. So they brought that woman and they called that woman in adultery heart. And they brought her to Jesus. And uh, when uh, they, they, and Jesus, the Bible said that Jesus was inside the temple and was preaching the word of God. And they brought that woman in the feet of Jesus. And they said to Jesus that, uh, that we have caught that woman. And according to the law of Moses, that woman is condemned to death. So she should be stoned to death. So what are you saying? And we saw that in the Bible, Jesus didn't answer them straight away. What was the, rea the reaction of Jesus? Jesus started writing on the ground. He started writing, he, did like, he didn't really answer, uh, he heard what they were saying. So he ignored them for the first time. And he started writing. And I, when I was meditating the word of God, and I understood that Jesus was writing and listening to them. Because when Jesus was writing, they carry on of talking and talking and saying to, the, to Jesus that we, uh, we caught her in adultery. She's a, she's a, she's a sinner. So she needs to die. So Jesus was just writing. And I believe that Jesus was writing all the sin of that woman. She was writing that she was an adulterous woman. She was writing all the bad things that she, ha she was doing. And she carried on, and he carried on writing and writing and writing. And then he stood up and asked them, Who among you has no sin? Let him cast the first stone. So all of them were surprised about the answer of Jesus. And Jesus didn't just stand up and started waiting for them to answer. He went back down and started writing again. So I believe that when Jesus started writing on, on, on the ground, he started now concerning all the condemnation of that woman. He started concerning all the condemnation of that woman. Amen. And because the Bible said that Jesus came on earth, he made himself a sinner so that us sinners may be whole again. So those people, those Pharisees, they didn't have the revelation of who Jesus was. So they could not understand the reaction of Jesus. Why Jesus was writing instead of doing something. Why Jesus was writing instead of answering them. So Jesus just was writing. And I believe at that moment, Jesus was changing the law. He was putting Amen. himself in the place of that woman. Amen. He said that he was writing and saying that I came to take the place of that woman. So now I am the adulterous woman and that woman is not whole again. Amen. So no one could stand and all of them, they found themselves guilty. Amen. Because no one will say that I have no sin. Amen. All of us. From where we are coming from, the way we have been were born, every, our daily life, we are sinning before God. So all of them, they find themselves guilty. So no one could condemn that woman. And what surprised me is that when one of them, by one by one, they started leaving that place. They left that woman at the feet of Jesus. I believe that that woman was crying. Because if they bring you to, to be condemned, I don't think that you will be rejoicing. You will be weeping and crying because you see yourself dying. You see how you are going to die. You see how you are going to be judged. And because you are a sinner, so she knew that that was her hand. Amen. She knew that that is my hand. So I have no one to take my place. I have no one to, to, to justify me. So that woman was in pain. She was in distress. She was crying. But she, at that moment, Jesus now asked her the question. Where are all those who are accusing you? And the woman looked around. No one. He's accusing me. And Jesus said to her, I 
do not accuse you. Why Jesus answered to her saying that? Because when we see the, the personality, the character of Jesus, it's the one that was able to, to take the stone and cast on that woman. But Jesus didn't do that. Because it was the, the Bible says that Jesus is, is he, he, he came unto this world, he had no sin. He's the Holy Lamb of God. He had no sin. So the only person who could stand was Jesus. And it, the only person who was able to condemn that woman, it was Jesus. But Jesus said, I did not condemn you. Why? Because Jesus had made an exchange at that moment. He was now a sinner. He was now the person that committed adultery. And now the woman was free to go. Because Jesus came into this world to redeem us. Jesus came into this world to give us salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, and when I was meditating, I saw that Jesus was preparing his way to go to the cross. He was preparing himself to go to the cross, to be crucified, to be crucified, to be put on the cross, to die for us. To die for that woman. That's why he gave that woman a life back. And he gave that woman a new chance. He gave that woman a voice. That's why he asked the woman, where are those accusers? He wanted the woman to speak for herself. And the woman said, no one. No one to condemn me anymore. Because you have redeemed me. No one to condemn me anymore. Because you brought in my life salvation. No one to condemn me anymore. Because you have given me forgiveness. No one to condemn me anymore. Because you brought life into my life. And that's why in verse 12 the Bible said that Jesus said, that I am the light, that whoever believes in me shall not be in darkness anymore, but he shall live in life, in light. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's the same way when we come to Jesus. We come with all our sin. We come with all our condemnation. We come with all our trouble. But when we receive Jesus Christ, you have to believe that Jesus is the one who has taken away all condemnation. He has taken away all your curses. He has taken away all your sin. And he's giving you a new chance to start again. It's a new life that you start again. So don't feel guilty about what you have done in the past. Don't feel in, uh, guilty about what your parent has done. Well, don't feel guilty about what your ancestors have done. Because you are starting a new life with Christ. Christ is our redeemer. Amen. Christ came to die for us Amen. so that we may live again. Amen. Christ came to die for us so that we may receive salvation. Amen. That woman was free to go. And I believe that when she went, she started a new life. And one thing that Jesus said to her, go and see no more. And it's the same thing when we are coming to church, we are coming to Christ. When we do our repentance, we change our way of life. When we do our repentance, we change our way of life. We are now trying to live a holy life for Christ. No sin anymore. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And many people come to Christ and they are still guilty of what has happened in the past. When you see that something is wrong in your life, you start asking yourself, have I been really forgiven about that sin? Has really Jesus forgiven me about that? Has really my life has changed? You have to believe. Hallelujah. Amen. You have to believe that Jesus has changed your life. You have to believe that you have started a new life with Christ. The Bible said that everything is passed away and everything now is new. Your life is new in Christ. You have to believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. Because when we don't believe, we put in question the act that Jesus has done on the cross. Was he really worthy for him to die on the cross if you don't believe that Jesus has redeemed you from death? 
If you don't believe that Jesus has redeemed you from all your condemnation. If you don't believe that Jesus has redeemed you from all your curses. Amen. Jesus gave to that woman a second chance. He gave to that woman a second voice. He wanted her to speak for herself. And to notice and realize that all those accusers, all those people who came to, to put her to death, no one was there to condemn her anymore. And I want to tell you that all those people that have been sent at the end of this year to condemn you, to bring you to death, to bring you to be in sickness, to bring you to be in poverty, to bring you to be crying every day, you shall see them no more. The same way that woman look around herself and was looking and seeing who, is, who are, where are the accusers. They are no more there. I want you to believe that those accusers are no more there. You are free in Jesus' name. Your situation is going is not the same anymore. If yesterday they have been calling you a prostitute, today you are a servant of God. If yesterday they have been calling you names, today you are no more there. What they have been calling you. Because Jesus has brought in you a new identity. He has given you a new identity. You are not the same anymore. You are not the same anymore. Jesus has taken your place. Jesus took the place of that woman. He made himself sinner so that that woman may be free again. He made himself sinner so that that woman may live freely. All you have to do is believe in him and walk in holiness. Sin no more. Believe that he's able to change your situation. Believe that he's able to change your identity. Amen. Jesus changed the identity of that woman. Even if yesterday they were calling her the adulterous woman. But I believe that when she went back, everybody could not say any, anything anymore. Because she was redeemed. She was a new person. She was now respected. Because her past has been condemned with Jesus at the cross. So she could go free and serve God. She, she could go free and worship God. She could go free and be in her house, in her husband. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Stop believing that what you have done in the past is still behind you. Jesus has taken it away. Amen. He is giving you a new chance. Amen. What you have to do is believe in it. Amen. Believe of the work of Christ on the cross. Amen. Believe of what he has done on the cross for you. Amen. Amen. I used to be like that. I used to always see that when something is wrong in my life, I always see that Oh, maybe it's reclamation from uh, my family, uh, uh, condemnation that are all behind me. Mm. I didn't have that renewing of the mind when I first accepted Christ. I was always afraid of what, what my parents, what my ancestor has, has done. But I couldn't see the part of where the Bible said that when you are in Christ, you are a new creation. You cannot compare yourself with those who are in the world anymore. With the rest of your family, you, you cannot compare yourself with them anymore. Because you have started a new life with Christ. You are now a new creation with Christ. Amen. You are not the same anymore. Even if you can see in your life that sometimes there is tribulation, but that's tribulation, maybe Christ wants to teach you something. That situation is maybe Christ is saying that if you carry on on that way, something will happen. So he wants to change you. He wants to shift you. So for you to understand that, maybe Christ will allow tribulation to happen. Amen. But it doesn't mean that the Lord is no more with you. Because if you are still working in holiness with God, yes. temptation can come but you shall overcome. Amen. If you are working in holiness with God, tribulation may come, but you shall be victorious. Amen. Mm. I remember now when we started having the, re the renewal of our minds. I used to, to go to, to do exam, and most of the time when I was going to do exam, I was failing 
Why? Because I, I, I will go in the classroom and I will feel sick. Because there were a law in our family that no one will succeed. So most of the time I was going in classrooms doing exams, especially when it's exam time. During all the year, I will work well. All my results, everything is well. But when it's the exam time, I have to fail. And it wasn't failing because I didn't write right, because I was feeling sick in the classroom. So it came into my mind, so I, I was always sick, and I, be, I began to be even afraid to go to where there is interviews, where there is exam, where I have to pass such, such exam. I begin to lose confidence in me. And I wasn't seeing that Christ has redeemed me from that. And I couldn't have that faith. I couldn't accept that Christ has changed my condition. It's not the same anymore. So I remember that when I went to do my driving test, I went for the first, the, the, the the theory one. In my mind, I would say that maybe I have to do it three or four times because I don't believe that. Because that mind was still, that way of thinking was still in my mind. But my husband said to me that you have to, 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 to believe that Christ has changed you. You have to believe that you are not the same anymore. Even if in your family they are failing, you are not going to fail. Amen. Even if others are failing, you are not going to fail because you Amen. are serving God. Amen. And you are in Christ. Amen. All those condemnations are, are no more in your life. You have to believe it. Amen. And at that moment, I realized that I needed to see first Christ instead of seeing all my, my the witch or the witch the wizard of my family or all the wizard around me all the condemnation around me. I needed to put Christ first Amen. Mm. to understand who is Christ in my life Amen. to understand what Christ has done for me mm. because if there is no difference in us accepting Christ and with those who are still in the world so there is no need for us mm. to come to Christ. Amen. We have to see that difference and we have to believe in it. We need to have faith that when we have accepted Christ, Christ is now living in us. Amen. So I remember going into that exam room. For the first time in my life, I went into that exam room and I came out successful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I need to go to do the theory back again. I went once and I came out successful. Amen. I was surprised of myself. And now I understood that I need to put Christ first. Amen. Stop saying that all oh, those accusers, they are accusing me. They are accusing me. No one is there anymore. Hallelujah. Believe that Christ has died on the cross for you. Amen. Believe that he has given his life for you. Amen. He hasn't given his life for nothing. You have to believe. You need to hold on the word of God. Even if you see this tribulation around you, just proclaim the word of God. Let that woman say, no one is there. When you see that something is going wrong in your life, just stand up and say that nothing. Hallelujah. You shall not succeed over my life because Christ in me is the hope of glory. Amen. I will not fail, but I shall succeed. Amen. You have to believe it. You have to believe. Don't feel guilty about what you have done in the past anymore. See yourself a new creation. Amen. See yourself a child of God. Amen. Now live in holiness. Hallelujah. Sin no more. That's what Christ is asking from you. Amen. Sin no more. Amen. Even if there is fight against you, you shall conquer because God is in you. Amen. And he shall give you victory. Mm. All the accusers of that woman, no one was there to accuse her anymore. Mm. No one was there 
to stand and cast the first stone because they were all guilty. Amen. In the world, all of us, we are guilty. We, have, we are guilty of what we have done. We are guilty of what our ancestors have done. We are guilty of our sin. Then the only person who came and died in this world to bring us back to God is Christ. Hallelujah. Just believe in him Amen. and it will change your life. Amen. Believe in what he has done at the cross. Amen. He will change your life. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus at the cross, he has nailed all condemnation, all curses, all destruction that the devil has prepared against you. He has nailed it at the cross of Calvary. Amen. And you know one thing, the Pharisees, when they were bringing that woman to the feet of Jesus, they didn't have the revelation of who Christ was. Because if they had the revelation of who Christ was, they wouldn't have brought that woman to Jesus. Because they would have knew that if this is the Redeemer, mm. this is the Savior, mm. He has been sent wow. to forgive all sin. Amen. So if we forgive that woman, Amen. they wouldn't have brought her to Him. It's the same thing. The devil has made the mistake to let you come to Christ. Hallelujah. The day you came to Christ, the day you accepted Christ in your life as your Lord and Savior, know that the devil has made a mistake because he knew now that you have the power to cast him away you have the power to destroy it to, to destroy his, his attack you have the power to say no to sin yes lord thank you jesus you have the power to say no to sin you have the power to stand. Hallelujah. Even if you see that a spirit is sending you to steal, but you have the power to say no. The one that is in me is stronger. I will not steal. I will not commit adultery anymore. I will not go into prostitution anymore. I will not lie because Christ is in me. Amen. Christ is in me Amen. and I will live a holy life for Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And that strength you can only take it when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Accept him. Mm. Accept him. Mm. Maybe you have accepted him before, but the way you were seeing him is not the way you should see him. Mm. Accept him and have the revelation of Christ. Amen. Who Christ is for you Hallelujah. first. Before seeing all the, the, the witches, the wizards, the attackers, your accusers, see Christ first Amen. and put him at the first place. Hallelujah. Put him at the first place Amen. in your life Amen. and accept that he has died for you. Amen. Accept that he has gone to the cross for you Amen. to be saved. Is our savior, is our redeemer. Amen. Then accept that no more accusers, no more condemnation in my Hallelujah. life, Glory no more Jesus. destruction in my life, Hallelujah. no more prostitution in my life. Hallelujah. No more stealing in my life. Hallelujah. No more sin. No more sin. Hallelujah. No more curse in my Amen. life. Amen. No more destruction in my life. Amen. That's why Christ said to that woman, Where are they? At the end of this year, I'm telling you, you shall see them no more. Amen. The Bible said to the children of Israel, when they were coming out of Egypt, they, Jesus, God said to them, all the Egyptians you are seeing, you shall see them no more. Amen. The same way, all those who are accusing you to destroy your life at the end of this year, Amen. all those who are standing, doing all kind of incantation to destroy your life at the end of this year, you shall see them no more. Amen. They shall be destroyed. Amen. They shall be destroyed by the power of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Just believe it. Amen. Just believe it. Amen. Just believe it. Amen. Just believe it. Amen. Amen. Just believe it. Amen. I want you to stand and say, Lord, no more condemnation in my life. No more curse in my life.